Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, movie bitches. bitches. Hi, everyone. So happy to be back here on the Movie Bitches. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we have James Mansfield here to end summer camp with a bang. We saved the best for last. What a way to go, literally, is the movie we're doing. What a way to go. This episode is dedicated to our Patreon, Tatiana. It worked out perfectly. Right? We almost planned it, right? It's like we had a plan ahead, <laughs> you know. But first things first, shout out to our Patreon supporters. $5 a month gets you early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing party. <laughs> Thank you, James. I'm sure you, do you have a um, Patreon, James? I used to. I'm thinking about actually starting it up again because it's actually really handy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. We really, our Patreon supporters keep us afloat. So thank you, everyone. Make sure to subscribe and share whole, not just to us, but of course to James, yes. to YouTube, to everything fabulous that you're doing. I'm really enjoying your glow up over the, the past few years. You've really been just soaring in your career. It's lovely to watch. Oh, thank you. You know, I don't mean to brag or anything. That's really not the nice thing to do, but I am actually a proud owner of a Wowie Award now. Yes! Next up, EGOT. Next up, EGOT. I love it. We have a fake Wowie that I stole. Yes, That's the we Bestie do. Award mm -hmm. that I gave to Avril. Yes! I stole a Wowie from their basement for um, Lifetime Achievement. Love I love that. it. I love it. <laughs> Second thing second, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Go to trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. <laughs> we definitely drank wine with this movie, which I would say helped. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. You might get a little snoozy, though. Yeah. I haven't seen this movie in well over six or seven years, and I forgot just how slow movie oh. it is. I had to watch it on, on fast forward, like, on more speed. Yeah, one and I a half. It. Well, so, okay. What a way to go. Let's get into it. I mean, camp classic. I, I think we can definitely say Shirley MacLaine. Absolutely. Outfits. I, I think one of the gayest, most fabulous things, you know, it's like written on someone's epitaph or something, is just, and Miss Head did Shirley MacLaine's gowns. You know, I was like, <laughs> that's just, like, never a gayer sentence has been uttered. I thought her epitaph was like, Edith Head gives good gown. Yeah. Gives good gown. I love it. There you good go. Good gown. I love that. Good gowned. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I figured out the perfect way to watch this movie. You put it on at a party on mute and then you yes. are hanging out and go, oh, look at that outfit. Okay, I'll go back to yeah. my, oh, what is that? oh my, look at that. Oh, wow. Look, Paul Newman showed up. I think that's the only way to do it. The best way. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Newman and those blue eyes. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh my God. So many hot leading men in this. So many. Yeah. I have to say, watching it, this movie, looking back at it, like I watched it in high school and watching it now with the mind I have now, it's really wacky. Yes. <laughs> it's for a Hollywood film. It's got that mid 60s, just wacky. It's, it's yep. the only way I can describe it. Like those, a lot of Dick Van Dyke movies from that era that are long, you know, Fitz Willie, like stuff. But you're just like, this is so 150 long. minutes. Yes. Oh, right. the pacing. I saw that. I go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, what a way to go! The 1964 camp classic starring Shirley MacLaine and every leading man. And basically, the plot is she is a witch who's cursed to have her husband's die comically tragically. I think I may be some kind of a witch. Over and over and. over. Over and over. Again. After they've made her increasingly wealthy. Yes. But all she yearns for is the simple life. I mean, there was so much going on here and yet nothing. It was so repetitive that it really was like, okay, we it get helps. it. At a certain point, I was like, die already so we can move on. <laughs> it's like watching a star is born. Like, oh okay, let's get this over with. Okay, right? Let's wrap it up, wrap it yep. up. They were trying a lot, right? There's this whole motif of film history. Genres. Through each story. Yeah, yeah, genres, I guess. Well, they start off with like a silent film, then French, you know, new like- wave. Um, yeah. New Age, oh, yeah. yeah. Cinema. The booby, boobies, boobies movies. Yeah. <laughs> Musicals, musicals, which yeah. were the most fun. But by that point, the movie had lost its all of its goodwill, and I was just like, "Let's get 
I have to say, this sounds crazy. This is my multiverse of madness. Mm -hmm. But her character's name was Louisa. Am I right? Yes. Yes. And Louisa was the same character that Shirley MacLaine played in Steel Magnolias. Yes. Who was a bitter A bitter, bitter, rich widow. widow. Rich widow. Ha, 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 ha. I am obsessed with this theory. I love it. I love love this idea. (laughs) That's why she's so, so, so bitter. She's just like, you know what? How many husbands have I had die on me? I won't do it again. Just going to walk around in my furs. And my sour disposition. I love it so much. I really don't think things could get any worse. Of course they can. I really love that. Origin story of Weezer. Oh, my God. Yes. (laughs) That makes this movie more tolerable. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I will say, like, okay. So for me, I think... If you don't watch it at 2x speed, you could certainly just skip most of the beginning. I mean, no offense to Dick Van Dyke, love him. I would have switched his character and Robert Redford's. Um, Robert Redford is not in this film. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Switched their casting or switched the when she married each of them? The casting. Okay. Because to me, Paul Newman is much more of like a, a farmy, you know, here I am just like shirtless, you know, throwing sure. some barrels of hay or whatever. Fishing Replace, shirtless. Switch, yes. um, switch Dean Martin and Paul Newman so she ends up with, with Paul. I'm here for that. Well, sure. Yeah. He, he seems, no, because then he would be too suave of a fancy businessman. You're like, yes, he's a billionaire and he's really hot and good looking and you like it's too much too many checked boxes right well i that. think it's a mistake too because dick van dyke is so likable he is the most likable yes. person on the planet perhaps and having him yeah. die first you're like oh no, oh no it just it kind of like spoils the mood and it, she actually had the most chemistry i think with dick van dyke of all of them so you're like oh no what And actually, Dean Martin, I thought they had good chemistry. Like, there was something there that was working. I was like, oh, maybe he doesn't die. Oh, no, he definitely does. He definitely does. But Dean Martin didn't die. (laughs) She ends up with Dean Martin. Oh, wait, it does have a happy ending. But then there was something that happened, I thought. Well, she... He beca- she breaks up with him and he, you know. It was hard to keep track. Hard to keep track. <laughs> well, because isn't Shirley MacLaine like unofficially a member of the Rat Pack? So that makes sense. They like hung out oh. all the time. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I think it's, I didn't, I didn't. you know, as official as you Common can be knowledge. to be in, indoctrinated into the Rat Pack. I think she was part of it. I think actually they talk about that in the Lucille Ball podcast. Wait, which one? The TCM one or the one where she is just old interviews the one with that, Lucy? Of the old, of her old radio show. So good. Which is really fun. I don't know if you know about this, James. They like, Lucille Ball's daughter found all of these old tapes of Lucille Ball's radio show that they had for like two seasons in or the, something. In the I, 60s. Like a, that she was doing yeah. in yeah. the 60s, yeah. And they found all the old tapes and they like remastered them and put them on as a podcast. And it's really kind of fun to listen to. It's not bingeable because it starts to get a little repetitive, but it is really fascinating because she's mostly just talking to all of these super fabulous famous stars about their like home lives. Yeah. Like, oh, well, your wife, Betty, does, you know, whatever. Did you like, listen oh, to the is... Edith Head one where she's like talks about how much she it. loves to cook Mexican food and how her whole house was like a hacienda. And like, I was just like, oh, my God, oh. I want to know all about no. this. All the parties all they would throw. It. Yeah, I didn't get to that one yet. But I did. It starts off with um, Danny Kay, who uh, famously like he built an entire Chinese Chinese food kitchen. kitchen. Yeah, he, he was like yeah. all into that. What? I know. He loved Chinese food and cooking Chinese food. And so he had an entire like walk set up and like a whole thing set up specifically to make Chinese food in his house. Now, Crazy. Danny Kay in this movie would work. Love it. I love Gene Kelly, but maybe maybe Danny Kay would have brought a little more fun and life to it. Gene Kelly was kind yes. of taken a little serious. Also, Danny Kay has that nice, like effortless, but funny, but sexy yes. quality yes. about. Yes. Ooh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gene Kelly, um, this isn't the role for him, I don't think. He starts off and I was like, oh no. What happened? He aged so poorly and he can't do anything anymore. He was method. He was method acting. He was really method, right? He really, I mean, I guess he's a great actor because he sold me. I was like, what happened? It was the worst act I'd ever seen. Just looking at Pinky made me want to cry. And then it's like, oh no, he can still dance, but now he's just basically parodying himself. 
Right. At, like in all of his movies. When he was what like is this? sad over the hill, I'm always on, I need attention. Gene Kelly, I was like, yeah. I'm sad. Oof. This is making me yeah. <laughs> sad. Ernie, your hair is getting thin. And Ernie answered, who wants fat hair? Oh, it's true. I uh, never seem to stop being on. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I like that about this movie, though, because it's sort of like a Looney Tunes cartoon. That's what uh -huh. I think I always liked about it. Yes. It feels like a really long sketch. Yes, yes. it does. The tone is set. I mean, the tones, I should say, because there's a lot of them. But it's set at the very beginning where she's, you know, in mourning in this pink house. Oh, my God. This, this pink coffin. This Pepto-Bismol house. Yeah. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> Coming so down the bad. stairs. And you're like, oh, what is this? <laughs> like, very Fosse-esque, very, like, fabulous. What's going on? Okay. But then it gets so zany and, like, wacky Looney Tunes the where the coffin... coffin How is nobody falling in that pool? Right? All the time. All the time. And dying. Like, someone must be dying in the Pepto-Bismol pool. What's happening? I don't well, know. Well, the house, <laughs> the set that they built for, was it Something's Gotta Give was um, Marilyn Monroe's last movie, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, that house was based on George Cukor's house that was, like, in the Hollywood Hills. Oh. So, anyway, there's just a fun kind of weird... But they needed to use that set because Dean Martin was in... Did they actually they paint filmed it pink? Perhaps. They had built the set for that other movie. But that's what they always did with sets back then. Like you see like the sets from Auntie Mame, they recycled them all. Like they're in so many different movies because they were cheap. Yeah. Paint it, no one's gonna know. <laughs> right, 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 right. It. Also, weird connection to Marilyn Monroe. She died making something he's got to give and this was supposed to be her next yes. film. Yes. Oh, wow. It was gonna be her and then also they had Elizabeth Taylor, right? Up for yeah. possibility, which would have been kind of great because she did have like eight husbands, you know? So it would have been kind of yeah. great. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would have been kind of... <laughs> mm. <laughs> Was this before or after Bride Wore Black? I don't know. So it has a similar plot. It's, this one's more lighthearted. Yeah, this is 64. Yeah, it was before. 69 was Bride Wore Black. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> well, yes, the opening and then the credits roll, and we've got an all-star cast, obviously, but then we've oh got God. Edith Head, Sidney Gilroff, again, famous yeah. hair designer to the stars. And I love that there was an entire credit for Precious Stones and Gloves. They're just, and Gloves <laughs> by, and I was like, yes. Yes, yes, this is correct. <laughs> it's interesting because like this movie was not a huge hit when it came out. It I mean, it's well. not a good movie. Uh, it's not, I'm sorry. It's not <laughs> good is the problem. It has Like moments. you wonder if it would have been had yeah. Marilyn been in. But, but it, the oh problem God. is that Shirley wasn't the problem. I thought Shirley was great. I thought she was great, but perhaps Marilyn could have brought something different to it. Um, it would have been more like a, a can, how can success uh, spoil Rock, not Hudson. Why can't I never remember what that movie is? Rock, Rock Hunter. Hunter, Rock Hunter. Where, you know, that movie isn't really very good on a whole when you look at it on a whole, but Jane Mansfield is bringing such a presence and energy to it. And not that Shirley isn't, but it, I don't know. It, it would have been a different movie. Sure. You need an actor that's more of a movie star, like a cartoon character. Yes. That's because Frank Tashlin, it kind of reminded me of Frank Tashlin movie, like exactly. Jane. Exactly. Like, and he used to do cartoons before he did films. So, like, you can tell all throughout, like, that's kind of the motif it has. Yes, it mm -hmm. would have been turned up even more. Like, this movie vacillates between, like, satire and cartoon, but the satire isn't, like, sharp or pointed at anything. Mm -hmm. It's just no. sort of, like, par loose parody. But I, I wish it was, like, a darker, sharper satire of what it was trying to say. The problem, too, for me, and maybe this is a read on Shirley a little bit, is just that, like, everyone's characters seemed vapid. There was not, like, any sort of depth to anyone. And so it was hard to really care about anyone, especially because all the men you knew were going to die after they were just the seven-minute-long montage of a film history lesson. You know, it was like, okay. But, like, you think about that. That's one of the things I really like about this movie is the fact, like, the men are props. And oh, yeah. Yes. They are tissues. They are fully lampshade boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Very I that. think I, I wish... Do love that. Because the clothes are such the star of the movie, I don't think that was like written necessarily into the script. Like I think that kind of came about during production. Had that been part of her character, like, well, why is she so into fashion? Is she picking out these outfits? Is she um, designing them? Why is she so into clothes? It would have been, it seemed like a natural progression that that would have been her trajectory. Like I'm going to start a fashion business or I'm at least going to address sure. this or but it always seemed like well these men keep buying me clothes 
I think that would have been a way to round it out instead of just, I want to live on a farm with no money. You're like, okay, I get it. Sure. But they explained it like this, like you missed it. You'll blink, you'll miss it. That he was an artist that put her in really tacky clothes, but that was the only time. Right, the, and then the once Paul he, Newman thing. Full dressing. But, yeah. but the Paul Newman clothes were so fucking fabulous that like. I know. I love them Kate, so much. Uh, with the eye hands all over the bodysuit. She's laying there like this statue. I was just like, yeah. Oh. Yes. Yes. So good. We haven't even talked about Robert Cummings. Cummings? Cummings? The the psychiatrist guy? No, 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 no. no this, this is normal. Excuse me. Someone please tell me, in what world would anyone, would any psychiatrist be like, you know what I really need? Maybe the turning, I guess I could, you know, it was the 60s, right? Everything was about moving furniture and remote controls. I think but this was why just would it... the 60s. You know, it was everything, machines and, and you know, hydraulics and everyone's moving stuff. You don't have to move sure. anything. It'll move itself. Right. We all loved the, the set of the Beatles apartment in Help. I get it. Oh my God. Yes. But yeah. <laughs> why would this chair ever go up 15 feet into the fucking room? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Dr. Stephenson! Oh, 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 I'm sorry, just relax. Because they needed a bit on top of many bits. Yes. Well, right, it was <laughs> Those just, yeah. uh, psychology scenes were getting boring. We needed some so wackiness. Boring. Wacky, wacky. Oh, the third moment was the part of this movie I really, really liked. The cat, like the bowl scene, especially milking the bowl. That was fun. And you get to see me shout out the like the barn. Forgive me. Like a bullet, like a lawn dart. So that was when yeah. that was when it started to feel like full Looney Tunes, and I was like, okay, I mean, this is this is something. Because remember, Dick Van Dyke dies with the, all the machines and the like. That it's it was very sixty. No, that this was movie. Is, that was is Paul 60s. Newman dies with all the machines. He also dies with machines, but Dick Van Dyke has a heart yeah. attack with with all those blinking machine lights and everything's you know he's like in a room of technology. Oh, I forgot. That's right because he becomes yeah. the salesman and whatever. Yeah, he definitely should have been the artist. I'm telling you, it would have been so much better. <laughs> maybe that. maybe he couldn't speak French, Andrew. Maybe he couldn't speak. French. I would know that scene. You went to anywhere. <laughs> he nailed it. I know that show you went anywhere, Mary. I always kept thinking, at least for a while, it kept seeming like she was putting on this performance of, I just want the simple life. I really don't want, while she's like, you know, machinating her own little, like, but no, it never really. I am three times as rich as I was the day we got married. Oh, no! That never I mean, that would have been something if she was like, ha ha ha. But we start the exactly. movie with her being like, I want to give all my money to the government. And that scene needs it to last 10 right. minutes. Dr. Spencer, you think I'm crazy too? <laughs> oh my god, forever. And it was just like supposed to be, oh, she really doesn't want any of this money. Instead, though, it made me be like, what's she trying to pull over on the government, right? Here, I'm trying to give it back. I don't want any of it. So then don't tax me on any of it. You know, like, yeah, oh, right, right. tax evasion. No, I tried to give it back and you said you didn't want it. My hands are clean. And that would have been more fun. <laughs> So it would have given Darker. her something to Darker. do. Satire. Yeah, something, right. Well, yeah. Like you said, she didn't have any dreams or aspirations aside from being a wife. farm housewife. A, a farm yeah. wife. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, okay, but at least have interests or something. Who do you think this movie was made for? Because like... Right? Were women in mind when they made this? Because there was no character development whatsoever. Oh, well, you know what women like is being Clothes. rich housewives. Yeah. Clothes. I mean, yeah. it was Shirley MacLaine's idea to bring Edith Head. She was like, she will be coming and doing the outfits. Thank you. And I'm yes. like, yes, hello, yes. Had this film's budget had to be the wardrobe. Oh, absolutely. oh my God. I have pages of notes about outfits. Um, we I mean, can go through it or not. I have pages of notes. <laughs> yes, because outfits. like, to be honest, that's one, what makes this movie camp. And two is probably the only thing that makes it have any sort of longevity. Like if it weren't for these fabulous outfits and a couple musical numbers, then I would say you could forget this movie. Sorry. Yeah, honestly, this plot is like three Mad Libs put together. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Insert. He okay. was a farmer. 
<laughs> right? Put your hand and in artist. the barrel, see what you pull out. It's yeah, exactly. And he died from machines. Machines. <laughs> these these fucking. Well, it was also a lot. It was a lot of machine deaths, which is kind of weird. One hundred and sixty thousand. <laughs> How did Pinky die? I've forgotten. The crowd ran Pinky. over him. Oh, right! Yeah. He got trampled. The mob. That's right, I forgot. <laughs> In that head to toe pink look of hers with the bubblegum hair and oh the pink my God, fur. Yes. Oh. Oh. So, quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more dead husbands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adolph Green and Betty Comden wrote, were writing partners through their whole life and have like seven Tonys between them. They did it on the town. Bandwagon, Auntie Mame, The Bells Are Ringing, Singing in the Rain. Auntie Mame? That, that explains, I was thinking this whole time, I was like, this has such an Auntie Mame-ish kind of yes. vibe. It really does. But it's and also the musical number had such an on the town vibe. Not just because it was Gene Kelly on a boat. I do think that knowing that, that they wrote all these books for Broadway and stuff, that this would make much more sense as just a musical because like musical plots yeah. can be a little dumber, a little looser because you got these great musical numbers to break it up and move yeah. the pace along. But it really only becomes a musical in the last half hour, 45. If this was a musical all the way through, I think it would actually be much more successful. Because they kept doing that that trope of like, here's the film reference as we tell the same story of their, and then we fell in love and everything was great until, oh no, something went wrong. You know. Machines! Um, like she's there in all black again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, oh, okay, we get it. But at least if it was a song that was like fabulous and fun and you're like, oh, well, like, what's the new song gonna be? Like, ooh, this one's fun and great. Like, it keeps you interested and it keeps things moving. Every musical number with the husbands when they talk about them, it ends with them dying. Yeah. Yeah. It would yeah, really love move, keep yeah. it moving. Yeah. It, and then they keep could be moving. parodying different um, musical genres or musical styles instead of yes. this broad range of just sort of genres in general. Uh, tighten it up. In fact, that would be really fun as a way to, like, if you were to redo this, that would be a fun yeah. way of doing it. Let's just say this for legal posterity. If we see this redone on Broadway, it's here first. Absolutely. This idea, it would made here first. Yeah. If Ryan Murphy <laughs> fucking does this for Netflix, first of all, I'm not watching. Secondly, I want to check. I did think it was funny that Paul Newman's character's name was Larry Flint. That that made me laugh. The name is Larry Flint. Oh my God, not the same thing. <laughs> and then the, his monkey, Frida, where, who was wearing fingerless gloves. Like, all of these things on paper, I'm like, this is my movie. And then you watch yeah. it and you're like, I wish this was better. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think we absolutely, and by we, I mean you, April, have to just like yes. edit. I think the way to watch this movie is probably just a montage of all of her looks being introduced. Like walking, and then, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, you know, ooh, ha, 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 here's my outfit. Beep, beep. It's very like the fashion show and singing in the rain. Oh my yes. God, yes. Dame Fashion says diet. Yeah, that. It started quite a riot. And if you must wear fox to the opera, Dame Fashion says diet. Black is best when you're in court. So I just put the, the music from the musical numbers under her walking sure. in. Sure. Well, but no, I want, I, want her, I want her dancing <laughs> with Fred Astaire, or with Fred Astaire, with, with Jim Kelly. Like, that was really fun. With her toothpick legs. So long, her legs. Crazy. Like, she was serving, although I feel like she was really miscast. Yeah, for, for the dancing, this kind of role. yeah. It was, um, she was doing her I best. I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think it was bad. A chicken. The movie. That's <laughs> <laughs> her the whole movie. <laughs> you know, Miss... Oh, no! 
<laughs> yeah, she did a lot of that. When it was funny, like once Paul Newman becomes rich and a famous painter, he really put on that like posh uh, Richard Burton accent, which then like tied into the Elizabeth mm. Taylor of it all. Joe, how can anyone explain the workings of the inner man? Actually, the act of creation might best be described as pure animal instinct. I'll never direct a better actor. And to think they wanted to put that Welshman in the part. Well, and I was just like, oh, yeah. this is so funny. I thought Paul Newman was probably my favorite of the husbands. Maybe Robert Mitchum. I don't know. I was trying to decide. They were all kind of duds. I don't know. The problem with Paul Newman's storyline for me, he was good, but the storyline was so stupid. I wanted it to be like, of course, some weird, like, you know, um, Da Vinci Code where it's like, ah, when you play the Beethoven, it, it paints, you know, Mon Edward Munster, you know, like some sort of Monet lilies right. or, you know, like <laughs> different songs make different famous paintings. And you're like, how does this work? But um, no, it wasn't that. It was more so just um, <laughs> surface level making fun of pop art instead of right. actually trying to make a, it funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, make a poignant <laughs> There's statement. Some people who absolutely had no idea what pop art was and as, trying to make fun of pop that art. That as well, that as well. <laughs> yeah, and then this absurdity though too where they just start like, why do they start kissing the two machines? They were like brushing each other's brushes. What the? Oh, and he and was like, he was stop that! To wake them up. Stop yeah, he's it. like, stop that! You you machine that has its own brain, and then they all like machines taking over. It was very bizarre that it was it's just the like, maximum overdrive, like in five minutes. It's really scary. whoa, it's getting scary. Now maybe I put the maximum overdrive score over these. Yes. <laughs> Shirley MacLaine is the straight man in this with all these other lampshade boyfriends. Yes. Yeah. That's very She true. never gets anything really funny or good, fun to do. No. She just kind of glides through it. Yeah. That was the problem that she didn't have yeah. anything engaging. It just fell flat too when <clears throat> she was like, all the physical stuff of her on that couch. Like, I was like, it, it's not working. I don't. You it's can keep not it. Working. Yeah. They yeah. Trying to make her more bimboy, but like, she's too smart. Yes. We know she's a bimbo. Yeah. Do you think Shirley MacLaine young for me? Because I'm so used to seeing her as an old woman. I know. Like the whole time sitting there, I'm just thinking to myself, like, it twirled up. Ah. Remember my 17th birthday party when you lifted your skirt up in front of all those I people? I did not lift my that guy skirt. Michael. It twirled up. Oh, my God. And there was that that high necked collar that was very like Princess Leia in The Last Jedi. That one that went all the way up to here. That was a good one. Ugh. Every, every look really was. That's what like kept me interested in wanting to see more of her was that it was like, well, what's she gonna be wearing next? But yes. that's such a damning thing to say about a character is that the only thing you care about of them is what Edith headgown they're gonna be wearing. Yes, <laughs> but you, every time you think, oh, this is my favorite. And then you're like, oh no, wait, oh no. But then, oh, but oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, then we get into the Robert Mitchum section, which has a lot of costumes because they have that whole montage. Oh, and apparently he did this movie for no fee for tax purposes. <laughs> How does that work? So that was fun. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, huh, okay. There's something to explore there. <laughs> What's this? Because he seems the most, like, it seems insane that he's in this film, right? You're Robert Mitchum, you know, what is happening? It's like Walter Matthau in um, Hello, Dolly. You're like, what? Uh, but apparently he needed uh, for tax purposes to, I don't know, I don't know. Or he just got like a suitcase full of money right. in his right. trailer. Right, cash that was left. And yeah. <laughs> he needed to buy some weed, you know? He famously was arrested for marijuana back, way back oh. when. I didn't know that. So maybe he was, yeah, it was some kind of legal entanglement. Who knows? But, oh my God, this tangerine poof with the huge and head to toe orange. Oh my gosh, getting out of, what was it called? The fuzzy production? No, I wrote it down. Lush budget. Imitation. Yes, lush, yeah. lush. I kept, lush. Yeah, I kept calling it lush bouger. We get that ice blonde, uh, white head to toe look. I mean, it's just, it's it's one after the other, after the other. The canary yellow with the silky cape. It's just like, it's, it's 
this, I guess, is kind of the montage that I, like, they already give you a outfit montage in the movie, which yes. is kind of crazy, you know? Yes. But, like, you could also montage the other ones, because there's so many outfits, but, like... I it's, mean, it's just, it's pages, it's pages and pages. There's, like, the gold brocade anti-mame style trim with, yes. like, the brown fur. There's the silver heplum dress that she wears and sits on the piano for that leg reveal. Um, that's right. <laughs> it just goes on. Oh, skirt my God. One. That, like, kind of Asian-inspired bubble skirt one with the up to... Uh, oh, my God. So good. And then the one that's just pearls. Like, the back is... It's literally just oh, utterly backless. Oh, I wanted that as, like, a string pride of look. I'm reminding you to remind me to tell you that I love you. Thank you for reminding me, are reminding you. Yes. It was like a thong that just had like pearl suspenders or something. And I was like, I feel like yeah. that's a great look for pride. Yes. <laughs> Make it happen. Make yes. it happen. Well, then there's the emerald green silk, you know, look that you did with the with the wrapped around the arm long, panel like, things. Slowing. You know, the yeah. <laughs> I feel this one could have had a little more of a, been given more of a moment. I wanted to figure out what was going on with these panels. Well, she was busting out of that dress when you saw the front of it. Like, oh my God. Yes, she was. <laughs> oh my God, we have to talk about the champagne glass bed. Oh yeah. That oh, they are in. Oh, yes. Oh my God. It's like a James Bond movie. <laughs> out of nowhere. It was like a James Bond movie. Like what is this champagne coupe filled with Pillows, I guess? Obsessed. <gasps> and then what about the orange, like, Jamiroquai 90s hat? The big, the big oversized top hat thing that she was wearing? And it had a, a scarf coming down. Like, it was a hood that came down. Oh, my yes. God. Rita's head went insane in this. Like, she snapped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I... They gave her all the money, all the fabric, and uh, do it. Do what you want. Do anything. Go for it. Like it kind of like reminds me of like you know the designer Theodora Van Ronkel. Mm. She oh, did it's a Van Ronkel. <laughs> yeah. Oh come on, Phyllis. What is this? It's a Van Ronkel. Isn't it fabulous? Stunning. <laughs> Where it's like they're so over designed and crazy. Yes, it's it true. was very that. <gasps> now yeah. Shelley Long in her prime doing this movie. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh yeah, Shelly Long could have put Roth really well. Yeah, I don't think she could dance, but that's fine. Nine years of ballet, asshole! Oh, she can dance. You saw True Beverly Hills. She can Freddy. Do the Freddy. <laughs> She did a good mashed potato too. I do remember oh, that. Yeah, they, had a whole, the they had a whole potato. dance montage. They did. What are you talking well, about? What sure, are you talking about? Sure. <laughs> I do think it needed to be an over the top Marilyn Monroe type of just like That's... this cartoonishly feminine, bubbly, just charismatic star, you know? And yes. you go, oh, this is why every man that comes into contact with her is like, I'm obsessed with you. Let's get married. What is it with this chick? She have beer flavored nipples? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Because Robert Mitchum was like, in the movie, was like famously a bachelor, right? And then suddenly it was like, I'm obsessed with you. Let's get married. I'm going to yes. buy you all the clothes. Let's buy the champagne yeah. bed together. And that was funny, that bit in the airport, how cars kept coming up to give him messages. And oh, we yeah, got a phone call, stupid. sir. Like, that was dumb. <laughs> no, no, I'll take it. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson. Overseas call, sir. San okay. Francisco. I just don't care. I don't have much small talk. I haven't any time for small talk either. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson. Overseas call. Hong Kong calling. Now that I think about it, I think Robert Mitchum and she had the most chemistry. Uh, he is the most just. And then maybe because the story was also kind of just like, it wasn't the same exact thing. He was already rich. So it wasn't right. like, oh, they were so happy being poor. I mean, then the end of his story was so dumb, but like, at least that was. Maybe because it was so fabulous, and I was just like, look at them being happy together. Yeah, that's right. They should just end it like this. But You no. just want that champagne bed. That's all. Oh, my God. I really do. <laughs> and that pearl thong, you know? The pearl it's thong and the champagne bed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Every gay boy's dream. <laughs> and a private plane covered in carpet, orange carpet. Was it orange? It was, like, a lot. Yeah. Well, you so know, much. it was the 60s. He did have. He did have the most character. Like, he had the most sort of things about him, like that yes. weird scene. he was where... like a fully formed human. Yeah, he like orders her dinner, right? He's like, she'll have the da 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 and whatever, and yeah. I'll have 
like a hard-boiled egg and... My usual has two soft-boiled eggs, gluten, toast, and a glass of yogurt. Toast? He said he had some weird order and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. Like, He's just so simple and like not pretentious, but he ordered me caviar, you know. But then we reach our final husband, I think. No, second to last. Final dead husband. Oh my god. Gene Kelly working at the Cauliflower Ear Bar. Yeah, that was a choice. This one was a slug. I'm sorry. It was so hard was. at this point, my breaking point. Just like I'd, lo I'd lost all my goodwill, and it was just like, oh, let's die already. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay with it. James went from three x to six x. It was just like, okay, let's get get on with it. <laughs> well, there was so many, so much time spent with not good Gene sad Kelly. Sad Gene Kelly. You know yeah. that you Ugh. were like, well, I don't want to. He was doing like his sad clown bit, and it was just like this is so. And it took him. Two hours to stuff to... his pockets and put. I gotta kind of rush over there right now. It, it takes me two hours for my props and to put on my costume and makeup. Oh, really? <laughs> Seemed excessive. Right? I don't know. What do you think, yeah. James? It's like the second a clown shows up, immediately just like. <laughs> <laughs> we won't just be acquainted. We'll be the very, very best of friends. This, this was such a weird conceit that if he just didn't wear his clown makeup and was himself, he was a superstar. It was just such a strange... It was a weird... I guess, like, then women took him seriously. They started to swoon, and I was like, okay. The whole thing is just, like, I was really into, like, whenever it started to get really glamorous, but the second she went back to being poor, I'm just like... Oh, yeah. Come on, speed this up. I don't like it. Yeah. Come on, let's move on. Yeah. Get on with it. <laughs> get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah! And we get the big uh, musical. What was that thing from? Yeah. Hold on one second. Do you hear that? No. I mean, there's like birds, birds chirping outside my window. So is that what you're? Okay. Saying? Is that what you hear? Okay, great. That's so what I I'm can't... hearing. They're great. They're here. Great. It's quite loud. Okay, great. We get to the big uh, ship, Navy. What was that yes. thing in 30 Rock? The the musical number about the... No, it, was, um, it wasn't 30 Rock. It oh, was... Oh, it was uh, Unbreakable Kimmy, Kimmy Schmidt. Schmidt. <laughs> yes, when Daddy's Boy. Daddy's Boy. Little, uh, Daddy's Boy. Yeah, that was silly. <laughs> it was very that. It was very it was. Eleanor Powell, you know, tap dancing down the line. <laughs> really hoping they would do like a Busby Berkeley number instead if we were gonna do like film references and whatever like really give me the production of well, it all. Well that's in our that's in our remake where this is just a musical that over Absolutely. you know the course of. Right they start diving into the pool of water you know everything's like woo. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well apparently Terry Gar is one of the chorus girls in this number so that's, that's huh. a thing. The musical number itself, like the, the production and the dancing were very on the town of uh, that kind of yes. era. But then the singing was very like Jeanette McDonald, Nelson Eddy. <laughs> And it's like, no, these they should were... be two separate jokes. This is yes. weird. Yeah, they were very disjointed. I was wait I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm confused. Yeah. Like they wanted to be like a movie movie, yeah. but then they throw away to things and it's like it was distracting and the most fun. Yeah. But then you return back to the boring ass plot. Oh, right. here we go again. She's sad. Yes. Now Pinky's famous and rich. Oh. But we do yeah. get this a whole bikini section. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my God, this lace, uh, long sleeve. Oh, oh my God, so fabulous. And then that backless, the one, the reveal, with the one that's like the reverse harness. <gasps> yes, I think that was also a number that I was like, mm, Pride Summer, yes. <laughs> Burned in my brain is her sitting by the pink swimming pool in the black bikini. Yes. And the crazy guy starts chasing her. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, burn her pink. <laughs> oh, and then the lace bathing suit, she had the matching lace sunglasses you know the oh my god by the end of this because i was reminded of the bathing suit runway from from drag race and i was like i wouldn't be mad at a queen literally trying to fit 
a look from what a way to go into every category of an entire season and just be like, this is my theme. Because <laughs> yes. you could probably do it. Even if you just brought looks only from this movie, you could yes. figure out a way to fit it into whatever category they gave you, I bet, too, because they're versatile Because there's enough, enough. There's enough, like, executive realness looks, you know, evening gown looks, um, campy over-the-top crazy art pop looks. Like, you could do it. I'm not mad at this strategy. I love that idea. I actually might steal that strategy. That's a good you idea. You do it when they invite <laughs> everyone stars. back. All stars. Secret plan. But yes, Dean Martin shows back up because she... Right quit him at the beginning and now he's poor so she likes him. It was just one dimensional and it didn't go it was. anywhere. Now here's a question. It seemed like they were really struggling and I couldn't understand where it's like, sure I understand that you want the simple life, Shirley, but yeah, like you have Shirley. 200 million dollars in the bank. Can't you just be like, cool, I bought a nice house in the country and we don't have to worry about working. We can just hang out with our kids and go on trips every now and then or do whatever the fuck we want to because there's money in the bank and like, great, I'm set. I had all of these fucking dead husbands. What a crazy life. It seemed weird that she was like, no, we have to really, you have to toil in that field, sir. All right, children, you can start your milk now. Aren't we gonna wait for daddy? No, daddy's finishing the plowing he started this morning. It's also such like a weird, like man, manly gaze of things where it's just like money is the root of all evil is what they're trying to like push onto us. But really, it's just maybe you just have bad taste in men. That's sure. also true. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Because we didn't even talk about like the flashbacks when she's like playing a little, like, we're well, not a little girl, but like a teenager. Oh, teenager. Yeah. Well, she's, she's in it her was very... like um, Anne of Green Gables, you know, drag. I'm Mary Dean Martin, yeah. you know, all that it stuff. It was very Aline, where she plays herself, where she plays Celine Dion at eight and at 40. It's crazy. It's weird, because I would say if this movie had leaned in more, it would have been better, but it leans all the way in and all fails. In. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But is camp. Is camp. Do you think this movie would work better with drag? I feel like it would. Yes. Like if, if there was drag queens playing the parts or if it was about a drag queen? I feel like drag queens playing the parts. I feel like it would probably work a lot better because at least you're leaning into the absurdity of it Yeah, all. <laughs> yes. Or certainly if she had like, she had no friend. I count like she had two women in this film that she talked to, her mother and that one girl with the gun. Yeah, that was it. I feel like that's the only time she talks to another woman. Yeah. Was there other women in the movie? I mean, there was like chorus girls and like extras, but like, did any other women have dialogue? I don't think so. No. This movie does <laughs> not pass the Bechdel test. Oh no. 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 <laughs> so yes, I would say it's not good, but you could put it on mute at a party and it's fabulous. Um, right, lots of fabulous looks, my... some musical numbers. Yeah, you could fast forward through dialogue yeah, think, scenes. It definitely gets thrown on the pile of like old Hollywood films where you definitely just watch it for the clothing alone, but they are god awful to say. Yes. Yeah. And there's a huge stack of those kind of movies. Yes, yeah. but the outfits yeah. are so bad. Fabulous. And I'm excited for your run on All Stars where you recreate them all because honestly, yes. I'm here for it. <laughs> yes, let's go for All Stars 57. Yes! <laughs> Coming next it's year. Be my <laughs> now, in our remake, who would we cast? As Louisa? Or all well, of them. It's, I in, feel like Jamie yeah. Dornan should be one of the lead men because he's a real himbo that could easily be murdered. Sure. Oh, yeah, that'd I'm be good. Yeah. Maybe James Corden. He doesn't get enough work. Oh. <laughs> and you, you wouldn't mind seeing him get killed off. Chris Pratt. I mean. uh, Chris Pratt, yeah, definitely. Oh my God, get out of here. If you were I here, like I would throw this wine in your face. <laughs> throw like a Robert Pattinson in there for like funsies, right? Yes, I could see that. Tom Holland. Tom but Holland. He's like the weird Twinkie one where you're like, why is there? That doesn't make any sense. He's Robert Cummings. He's, yes, he's, he's Robert. He's, no, I could not see him as a psychiatrist at all. <laughs> I don't know who I would cast because they have to be able to sing, dance, act, carry a movie, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a tall, that's a tall order these days. I'm that's sure there's someone, but I just can't think yes. of it off the top of my head. <laughs> Leah Michelle. As far as like the Shirley McCoy, oh my God. <laughs> and for real, no other women on cast with her, just her. Just her. <laughs> she plays everything. She plays all the parts. <laughs> She's in love with herself. She also plays all the husbands. Yes, there you go. <laughs> I would say if they did remake it, they would probably cast Scarlett Johansson and I would be very mad. But that is probably oh, what mad. would no, happen. No, she's too old. It needs, I mean, no offense. But like, you know, it needs to be someone much younger, I, I think. Because if you're going to start at the beginning, you know, and then they, I don't know. We could make it work. We'll think about but it. But mom, I don't want to marry Dean Martin. <sighs> but I'm not going to 
going to marry him just because he's the richest man in town. He's a sneak and a bore and a drag. And he's been with every girl there is. And besides, I don't love him. There's no such thing as love. <laughs> and this, honestly, when they were panning through all of those, they had to show each sign and then show each sign again but change the words to, you know, money is, you know, the root or what. I was like, ugh, we get it. It's grim. <laughs> I have a lot of contempt for the runtime and pacing of this film. It's beginning to blossom into complete contempt. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. We couldn't have done it without you. Honestly, no. I don't think we could have made it through. <laughs> I like I said, the movie is on YouTube, so just hit that nice good old fast forward. I love that. Yeah. Great. Cheers. Cheers. Yay. Yay.